Well, I mean, as the chief executive, uh, what types of, of global dynamics keep you up at night to making sure that you can continue delivering value to those customers? I know you all are laser focused on what delivers value to those customers and keeping that dirt on your boots, but what outside factors occupy your headspace when it comes to kind of carrying out your mission? One of the ones is definitely the whole business model change where for many, many decades we've been working, uh, we've been interacting with our customers through putting products on a shelf. Uh, so via marketplace, we put product on a shelf and a customer walks in and buys it. That model is being disrupted, not just through e-commerce, because that's still a platform sale, but as we have more and more integrated solutions, and that's also where we want to go to more software-based solutions. So it's the hardware. We will always be a hardware player because that's what we do really well. But hardware plus software, we can start creating solutions that are more holistic, integrated to help decision-making for farmers. So, okay, if you don't have water in that water trough, let's automatically move those animals over there. Or if you know the weight gain, let's take some of those animals to back to the shade. Or I mean, we can start making automated decisions. That requires us to also change some of that business model. That is no longer just a product you're selling that farmers walk in and they buy an energizer and go home. We are selling a holistic solution. That includes weigh scales and paddock wares and e-shepherd and water monitoring. How do we do that? I mean, how do we sell that holistic solution from a company that's always worked through stores? How do we change that business model? Uh, we've always had a good relationship with end, end customers, but it was a different one. So that is keeping me up at night. How can we do that well? The other one would be all of the geopolitical tensions that we're seeing and how that could potentially disrupt our supply chains. Now, that's something that is part of my paradigm anyway, that I want to manufacture stuff as close to the end market as possible. Big U.S. end market, let's try sh shifting some of that manufacturing in the U.S., shift some of that manufacturing into Brazil, you know, for a big Brazilian market. Australia, we already have some manufacturing footprint. So, that is always on my mind. It's not necessarily a big shift. It's just, again, the local view of trying to localize as much as possible. Some of the other things that keep me up at night would be the impacts of the environmental changes. And it's twofold. So first of all, the actual climatic changes make it a lot harder for us to predict when people will buy our product. Typically, like in Australia, we would know a lot better when we have a drought or when we're going to have El Nino, La Nina. It really has an effect on buying patterns, and it used to be a little bit more predictable. And so we would be able to build stock and get stock in the stores for a, you know, a flood, um, a, you know, a rainy season or a dry season. These things are all a bit upset. We get floods when we don't expect them, droughts when we don't expect them. And so having the right product in the right place at the right time becomes a little bit more difficult and less predictable. And we've seen that. Big climatic events like we've had in New Zealand with big tornadoes coming through, floods coming through, people needed to restock. We weren't ready for that restock because we weren't expecting all of those assets being wiped away, being flooded. So that is a problem. And then on the climate side as well, the increased regulation. So because of the climate change conversations that are going on, we see countries putting in regulation, like keeping animals out of waterways. You know, all of that regulation coming in also has an impact on our end customers who are being increasingly challenged to keep up with that. Often people are walking away from farming altogether because it's becoming too hard. They're, they're, they're doing conversions from sheep and beef farms to forestry because it's just easier to plant trees. So these kind of things definitely have an impact on us and they keep me awake at night. I can't, we can't control it, but we can make sure we're agile. We can, again, try and get alongside our farmers and help them and, and provide solutions. But yeah, not everything is in our hand. Like it's not in, you know, farmers and ranchers are at a, bear the brunt of that as well. So we're in that together.